Welcome back to my channel. This is Bonita Gracia RN. For today's video, as I promised, I will be sharing with you test-taking strategies that you may use in the nursing licensure exam or even in your minor and major exams school. This is a continuation of my previous vlog about my journey in passing the NLE. So if you want to gain more tips, tapusin mo ang video na to. The nursing licensure exam is not about how much you know, but it's about how you apply what you know. So in answering any question, always go back to your foundation. And yon, those what you have learned from the start. Always use your nursing knowledge to answer the question. Test taking strategies will only help you know specifically what the question is really asking. So look for the keywords. Before that, ano ba yung mga strategies na hindi nagbo-work in answering the NLE? Cramming. You read the question, then you read the choices, the answers. And then you go back to the question, and then you pick the answer. Ibig sabihin nun, sa unang bas mo pa lang, hindi mo naintindihan yung tanong. Sa unang word pa lang, hanggang huli, intindihin mo yung tanong para hindi balik-balik. Ano pa? You choose your answer based on a gut feeling instead of thinking carefully. Ay, feeling ko, eto yung sagot. Kasi eto na yung sagot nung dating tanong nung prof, eh, nung prelims. No. What else? You answer based on your personal experience rather than nursing theory. Magkaiba po yung naranasan ng papa mo dun sa naranasan ng pasyente na nasa tanong. So, always go back to your foundation. Selecting the answer with different length. Ay, pinakamahaba ito. Ito yung sagot. Hmm, ginagawa ko. Yan o. Hindi po yun applicable lagi ha, sa NLE. Depende pa rin sa kung ano yung nalalaman mo. Tamang sagot based on your nursing knowledge. When in doubt, choosing the answer choice C. Tama ba yun? The nursing licensure exam does not just test your nursing knowledge. It tests your ability to think critically and solve problems. In the NLE, multiple choice questions po tayo. A to D ang choices. Siyempre, isa lang dun yung tamang sagot. Yung iba, distractors na. Always check for the information ng pasyente dun sa tanong. Kasi madalas na kakaligtaan lang to eh. Eh, importante pala. Kasama pala yung dapat tandaan para masagot mo yung tanong. Take note of the age of the patient. Yun yung laging nakaligtaan eh. Mali mo, pedya pala yun. Iba ang nursing care sa pedya and adults. The history, the type of the disease, the symptoms, the medications, or even the lab values, etc. Imagine assessing the patient in real scenario. Kailangan mo lahat yung banggit ko. So, the first step to correctly answer exam questions is to determine what the question is really asking. Tip number one, read the question carefully from the first word to the last word. Huwag magmadali. Huwag din naman sobrang magtagal sa question. Mauubusan ka ng oras. Kaya pag binasa, intindihin. Tip number two, look for the keywords or hints. Yung mga adjectives most, first, initial, best, indicates you must establish priorities. The phrase further teaching is needed means you are looking for the negative or the incorrect information. So yung sagot will be the incorrect information. The phrase client understands the teaching means the answer will be the true or the correct information. Tip number three, reward the question. For example, let's focus on the question lang muna. A client is admitted for treatment of active tuberculosis or TB. The nurse teaches the client about TB. Here's a question. Which of the following statements by the client indicates to the nurse that further teaching is necessary? Ano yung hint or keywords doon? Further teaching is necessary. Which means, ano yung hahanapin natin? Yung mali or incorrect information. Reward the question. What is incorrect information about TB? Then, you can now choose your answer. Ganun lang, you really need to understand what is the question really asking. 
You can use elimination. Malikan natin yung question kanina. Eliminate incorrect answer choices. A client is admitted for treatment of active tuberculosis. The nurse teaches the client about TB. Which of the following statements by the client indicates to the nurse that further teaching is necessary? Reward the question. What is incorrect information about TB? Choice A. I will have to take medication for 6 months. B. I should cover my nose and mouth when coughing or sneezing. C. I will remain in isolation for at least 6 weeks. D. I will have a positive skin test for TB. Choice A muna tayo. Is this wrong information? No. It is a true statement. Clients will need to take their medications regularly for 6 months or longer. Sa choice B naman. B. I should cover my nose and mouth when coughing or sneezing. So B. Is this wrong information about TB? No, it's a true statement. TB is transmitted by airborne contamination, inhaling organisms directly into your lungs from contaminated air from infected person. It can also be transmitted direct or indirect contact with the infected person, usually discharges through kissing, sneezing, or coughing. C. I will remain in isolation for at least 6 weeks. C. A wrong information about TB? Maybe, so we'll leave it for consideration. D. I will have a positive skin test for TB. Is this a wrong information about TB? No, this is true. A positive skin test indicates that a person already have developed antibodies to the tuberculosis bacillus. So, it doesn't tell whether you have latent TB infection or active TB. So, eliminate the choice. So, the only answer na natira is choice C. Alam mo, ito yung sagot kasi na-eliminate mo na yung three other choices. Clients with TB, their activities will be restricted for 2 to 3 weeks or you may advise them to rest during the first month after ma-initiate yung medication therapy. Paano mo malalaman pag hindi na sila nakakahawa? When they meet the criteria, una, they've been receiving adequate treatment for 2 to 3 weeks na. Pangalawa, yung symptoms nag-improve na less yung coughing at wala ng fever. Sample lang yun. Panghuli, they have 3 consecutive negative sputum smear from sputum collected on different days. So, tapos na tayo dun sa elimination. Sunod, recognize expected outcomes. Sample question na lang. The physician prescribes ABG arterial analysis for client receiving oxygen at 6 liters per minute. Results show pH of 7.40 bicarbonate of 26 millimeters mercury and partial pressure of carbon dioxide 42 millimeters mercury partial pressure oxygen of 90 which of the following should the nurse do first and yung keyword first choices increase the client's oxygen flow rate b elevate the head of the bed of the client C. Document results in the medical record. D. Instruct the client to cough and deep breathe. So, in the question, you would assume na the problem is being described. So, pipiliin mo yung sagot that involves fixing the problem. Pero, let's look at the question. So, the keyword is first. So, ano raw yung una mong gagawin? Di ba may binigay na ABG values? So, now, let's interpret the ABG results. pH is 7.40. Is it more than 7.45 to make it basic? No. 7.40 nga. So, it's within the normal value, 7.35 to 7.45. Nanggit na, diba? So, pH is normal. For the bicarbonate, 26. Let's look at the normal value, 22 to 26. Oh, 26 daw. So, pasok. Normal din bicarbonate niya. For the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 42. More than 45 is acidic, less than 35 is basic. So, 42 is normal. For the partial pressure of oxygen is 90. Normal is 80 to 100 millimeters mercury. So, 90 is within normal range. So, normal then. So, all in all, puro normal. All results are within normal limits. So, pag binigyan kayo ng mga lab values, interpret agad yung results. So, let's reward the question. What should you first 
do for clients with normal ABG results. Let's look at the first choice. Choice A, increase the client's oxygen flow rate. This is unnecessary kasi oxygen is within normal limits naman, so eliminate. B, elevate the head of the client's head. Yes, you may do this, but this is unnecessary kasi normal naman yung ABG results. We are not trying to fix something here, so don't overthink. C. Document results in the medical record. This should be done because ABG results are normal. D. Instruct the client to cough and deep breathe. This is usually done for patients with limitations sa paghinga or respiratory function due to immobility or post-obsipation mo. So, the only given information in this question is client's ABG results na normal naman lahat. Although, this could be done, no indication that this is necessary. So, eliminate. Ang tamang sagot, C, document results in the medical record. Kasi normal yung ABG results. The trick is deciding whether the information na binigay sa'yo is normal or abnormal. And then, you answer the question accordingly. First, take care of the client, then the equipment. Take care of the client first. Take care of the equipment second. Sample question. A client who sustained a fractured left femur in a car accident is placed in a balance, suspension, skeletal traction using a thomas splint and a Pearson attachment. The client reports terrible pain in the left thigh. Which of the following should the nurse do first? Keyword is first. Choice A. Determine that the traction apparatus weights and ropes are aligned and hanging free. B. Ask the client about characteristics and location of the pain. C. Check the thomas splint and Pearson attachment to ensure proper positioning. D. Explain to the client that pain in the affected leg is expected. So, let's review. Choice A. All weights should be hanging free and balanced suspension skeletal traction. This answer choice has you checking the equipment, hindi yung pasyente. So, your first concern should be the client, not the traction. Choice B. Ask the client about characteristics and location of the pain. The nurse should focus on assessing the client and the reported problem before assessing the function of the equipment. All reports of pain should be thoroughly investigated by the nurse. Choice C. Check the thomas splint and Pearson attachment to ensure proper positioning. This answer choice has you checking the equipment na naman, not the client, not the patient. Your first concern should be the client, not the traction. Choice D. Explain to the client that the pain in the affected leg is expected. Any reports of pain are considered abnormal. So, you should investigate them thoroughly. So, the correct answer is B. Ask the client about characteristics and location of the pain. You take care of the patient first. In answering medication administration, you must be knowledgeable about the medications and use the rights of medication administration. Let's look at some medication questions. The physician prescribes furosemide and spironolactone for a client. Prior to administering the medications, the nurse determines that the client's potassium level is 3.2 mex. In addition to notifying the physician, the nurse should anticipate taking which of the following actions. So, ano yung given doon? Potassium level is 3.2. What is the normal value? 3.5 to 5.3. So, yung 3.2 mo is less. So, abnormal yung result. A. Hold either the furosemide or spironolactone. B. Administer the spironolactone only. C. Administer the furosemide only. D. Administer the furosemide and spironolactone. For choice A, the potassium level falls below normal which is 3.2 nga. Furosemide is a potassium-basing diuretic and spironolactone is potassium-sparing diuretic. So, there is no reason to hold the spironolactone because mababa na nga yung potassium ng pasyente mo. So, eliminate this answer. B. Administer the spironolactone only. The spironolactone should be administered. C. Administer the furosemide only. Do not administer the furosemide kasi nga, it is a potassium-wasting diuretic. The more na bababa yung potassium ng pasyente mo. So, eliminate. D. Administer the furosemide and spironolactone. Do not administer the furosemide. So, eliminate. The correct answer is B. The spironolactone should be administered kasi 
Pababa yung potassium at kailangan natin mag-save ng potassium which is yun yung action ng gamot. Strategies for priority questions. You will recognize priority questions in the NLE because they will ask you what is best, most appropriate, most important, first, or initial response. Yun yung mga keywords. Sample question. Which of the following would most concern the nurse during a client's recovery from surgery? Anong keyword? Most concern. Anong information gagagaling lang ng pasyente mo sa surgery? Choices: A. Safety, B. Hemorrhage, C. Infection, D. Pain control. Kayang kaya mo to sagutin with nursing knowledge. Correct answer is B. Hemorrhage. Bakit hindi C. Infection? Yung correct. A. E, infection is a major complication din naman ng surgery. Yes, it is an important concern after surgery, but if the client has life-threatening hemorrhage, then the fact that the wound is infected is not much important. Three strategies that will help you establish priorities in answering the NLE. 1. Maslow Strategy 2. Nursing Process Strategy 3. Safety Strategy Maslow's hierarchy of needs identifies five levels of human needs. Una, physiological needs, followed by safety and security, love and belonging, self-esteem, at yung huli, self-actualization. The highest level of Maslow's hierarchy of needs is self-actualization. To achieve this level, the client must experience fulfillment and recognize his or her potential. In order for self-actualization to occur, all of the lower level needs must be met. To use the Maslow strategy, you should first recognize the pattern in the answer choices. So step one, look for the answer choices. Determine if the answer choices are both physiological or psychosocial. Kung oo, apply mo yung Maslow strategy. Sample question. A client is admitted to the hospital with a ruptured ectopic pregnancy. A laparotomy is scheduled. Preoperatively, which of the following interventions is most important for the nurse to include in the client's plan of care? A. Fluid replacement. B. Therapeutic communication. C. Emotional support. D. Oxygen therapy. Ano yung keyword? Look for the keywords. Most important mean... This is a priority question. Pwedeng more than one answer choice is correct. Nursing action. Pero isa lang yung most important or the highest priority action. Step 1. Look at the answer choices. You see both physical and psychosocial interventions are included. Apply Maslow. Eliminate all psychosocial answer choices. If an answer choice is physiological, don't eliminate it yet. Remember, Maslow states that physiological needs must be met first. B, which is a therapy. Therapeutic communication should be discarded. Therapeutic communication falls under psychosocial interventions. C. Emotional support is also psychosocial intervention. So you have now eliminated two of the possible choices. Now look at the remaining answer choices and ask yourself if they make sense. A. Fluid replacement makes sense because the client has ruptured ectopic pregnancy. Ectopic pregnancy is implantation of fertilized ovum in a site other than the endometrial lining, usually the fallopian tube. Ibig sabihin, na-implant yung fertilized egg hindi sa uterus kundi sa labas ng uterus. Initially, the pregnancy is normal but as the embryo outgrows a fallopian tube, the tube ruptures causing extensive bleeding into the abdominal cavity. Letter D, oxygen therapy doesn't make sense with ruptured ectopic pregnancy. Bakit? Hindi na kinakailangan ng client yung respiratory care prior to surgery so eliminate the answer. Wala dito sa answer choices Yung mas importante over physiological demand ng fluid replacement prior to surgery. What is the most common complication of ruptured ectopic pregnancy? It's hemorrhage na naman. So, fluid replacement is the correct answer. Let's try the nursing process strategy on the next question. The mother of a client with type 1 diabetes calls the physician's office to discuss the child's self-monitoring blood glucose. The client's blood glucose level is being tightly regulated with a combination of NPH and regular insulin before breakfast and supper. The blood glucose levels were 220 mg per dl and 210 mg per dl. Which of the following should the nurse tell the client's mother? A. Continue with the current medication treatment. B. Check blood glucose level during the night. C. Administer NPH insulin later in the evening. D. Serve the bedtime snack earlier in the evening. Let's reward the question. What advice should the nurse give the mother about her diabetic child who is hyperglycemic in the morning? 
Let's read the answer choices. There is one assessment answer, which is B. Check blood glucose level during the night. Three implementation answers, which is A, C, and D. We can use the nursing process assessment versus implementation strategy. Refer to the question to determine whether you should be assessing or implementing. So, sinabi sa'yo nung nanay na yung blood glucose levels daw ay mataas nung last two mornings. This indicates that there is a problem. According to the nursing process, you should assess first. Eliminate answer choices and then choose the best answer. So, tanggalin natin yung A, C, and D. Implementation answers yon. So, ang E1 is B. This question is about smoggy effect which is rebound hyperglycemia that occurs in response to a rapid decrease in blood glucose level during the night. Treatment includes adjusting the evening diet changing insulin dose, and altering the amount of exercise to prevent nocturnal hypoglycemia. Kahit narinig mo na yung sumogi effect, you are still able to correctly answer this question using the nursing process strategy. Let's look at another question. A child biking to school hit the curb and then fell, injuring the leg. The school nurse was called and found the child alert and conscious, but in severe pain with a possible right femur fracture. Which of the following is the first action that the nurse should take? May keywords tayo. First action. mag assess ka pa ba? No. Na-assess mo na na pwedeng may right femur fracture daw yung bata. Let's reword the question. What is the highest priority for a fractured femur? Read the answer choices. A. Immobilize the affected limb with a splint and ask the client not to move. B. Assess the circumstances surrounding the accident. C. Place the client in semi fowler's position for comfort. D. Assess the neurovascular status of both legs and compare the findings. The answer choice says, halo sila ng assessment and implementation. So, let's go back to the question. Whether you should be assessing or implementing. Lalo, first action yung hinihingi. According to the question, nalaman na nung nurse na yung bata daw ay may possible femur fracture. So, this implies that the nurse has completed the assessment step. So, it's now time to implement. First action, eliminate answers B and D. Kasi assessment sila. Naiwang choices A and C. Which takes priority? Immobilizing the affected limb or placing the client in a semi fowler's position to facilitate breathing. The question does not indicate any respiratory distress. So, the correct answer is immobilize the affected limb. Answer to possible right femur fracture. That's the first action. Yung iba sa inyo, pipili ng answer that includes A, B, C or the airway breathing and circulation which is also used for priority questions. Pero nakadepende pa rin po sa tanong. But make sure the answer is appropriate to the question. Use the ABCs to establish priorities but make sure that the answer is appropriate to the situation. In that question, breathing is mentioned dun sa isang answer choices. So, kung inisip mo agad ay airway to airway. Breathing eh. No, it's not appropriate dun sa situation kasi wala naman sinabi dun na may problem sa breathing na yung bata eh para sagutin nyo yung ABCs. Ang sinabi dun, may possible fracture na siya. So, iba yung sagot. Kung sinagot nyo yung breathing, ito yung mali na kayo. Third strategy, safety. Responsibilidad nating mga nurse to ensure the safety of our patients. Safety includes meeting basic needs. Ano yun? Oxygen, pagkain, or fluids, etc. Reducing hazards that will cause injury sa pasyente mo. Kaya nga laging raise sideways up for safety to prevent fall ng pasyente. Let's apply that strategy sa next question. A pediatric patient undergoes a tonsillectomy for treatment of chronic tonsillitis unresponsive to antibiotic therapy. After surgery, the client is brought to the post-anesthesia care unit. Which of the following actions should the nurse include in the client's plan of care? A. Institute measures to minimize crying. B. Perform postural drainage every after 2 hours. C. Cough and deep breathe early. D. Provide ice cream as tolerated. Let's reword the question. What should you do after? Don't select me. All answer choices are implementations. Can you answer the question based on your knowledge of a tonsillectomy? Yes. If not, continue to ask yourself, 
What will cause the client the least amount of harm? A. Minimize crying. Minimizing crying will help prevent bleeding. Keep in consideration. B. Postural drainage. Every two hours. No. Because this may cause bleeding. A. Ang complication after tonsillectomy is bleeding. C. Coughing and deep breathing early. No. This may cause bleeding. Kaya nga, we prevent them from coughing or clearing the throat. Kasi, it will increase the pressure in the suture line. It will cause bleeding. D. Provide ice cream as tolerated. No. Ice cream may cause the client to clear the throat. It will cause bleeding na naman. So, eliminate. The correct answer is A. The nurse must prevent post-operative hemorrhage, a complication after this type of surgery. Crying would irritate the client's throat and increase the chance of bleeding. Pwede lang silang bigyan ng ice chips or popsicles or small sips of cold fluids to lessen the bleeding. Strategies for positioning questions. Yung iba, hindi comfortable magsagot ng mga positioning questions kasi they don't know the whys of positioning. They don't know the terminology. They have difficulty imagining various positions. Immobility occurs when a patient is unable to move about freely and independently. To answer questions on positioning, you must know the hazards of immobility. Sample question. Immediately after a percutaneous liver biopsy, the nurse should place the client in which of the following positions? A. Supine B. Right side lying C. Left side lying D. semi -fallers. So, by positioning the client after a liver biopsy, you are trying to prevent something or promote something. Think about what you know about liver biopsy. You position a client after this procedure to prevent something. The most serious and important complication after percutaneous liver biopsy is hemorrhage. So think about principles of anatomy, physiology, and pathophysiology. How do you prevent hemorrhage? Apply pressure. Where is the liver? It's on the right side of the abdomen under the ribs. So how should the client be positioned to prevent hemorrhage from the liver? which is on the right side of the body. Look at the choices. A. Supine If you lay the client flat on the back, no pressure will be applied on the right side. Eliminate. B. Right side lying If you lay the client in the right side lying position, will pressure be applied to the right side? Yes. So keep it in consideration. Left side lying No pressure is applied to the right side. So eliminate ulit. Semi Fowlers. If you lay the client on the back with the head partially elevated, no pressure is applied na naman sa right side, so eliminate. The correct answer is right side lying. Hindi mo mafi-figure out yung correct position kung hindi mo alam yung mga terms such as supine, semi fowlers. So, tendency mang ugula ka. Hindi mo rin malalaman yung correct position kung hindi mo alam yung anatomy and physiology. First year pa lang ng nursing, pinag-aaralan na natin yan. So, dapat alam mo na. So, kung inisip mo, saan ba yung liver? Sa left side. Mali na yung sagot mo. Hindi mo rin malalaman yung correct position kung hindi mo alam what are we trying to prevent or promote dun sa situation ng pasyente. Kung hindi mo alam ang complication after liver biopsy is hemorrhage, then manghuhula ka na naman. If you think of images, imagine mo yung sarili mo na pinaposition mo yung pasyente. Kung pag pinaposition ka ba dito, it will make sense. Pag dito sa kabila, it will make sense. Ganun lang. So, always go back to your foundation. Nursing knowledge pa rin po. Maka-apply sa lahat ng tanong. Test-taking strategies will only help us determine ano nga ba yung tinatanong dun sa tanong. Answer as many exams as you can. Kaya nga nung sinabi ko sa previous vlog ko, nagsasagot ako ng 50 questions per day. Dinadagdagan ko yun na hanggang tumagal para ma-challenge yung utak kong magsagot ng maraming tanong. Alamin nyo kung saan nursing subject kayo mahina. Paghandaan nyo rin yun. Hindi kasi pwedeng, ay, mag-focus lang ako dito sa topic na to. Kasi sana... Mas maraming pediatric nursing questions yung lumabas. Hindi pwedeng sana-sana. Hindi mo alam yung lalabas sa, sa board exams. Lahat ng tanong tricky. So, dapat maging prepared ka from basic anatomy hanggang complicated topics ng nursing. Kasi kung nagseryoso ka naman, simula ng first year at naitindihan mo yung 
topics, hindi lang minimize yung learning mo dun sa bawat topics, then madali mo nang masasagot yung board exam. Panoorin nyo rin yung previous vlog ko about 10 tips for nursing students kasi lahat yun ginawa ko in preparing for the board exam. Hindi ko na ulitin dito. Do the following on the exam day. Keep moving forward. In answering questions, kung may isang question ka doon nahirapan kang intindihin or na mental block ka, wag naman sana, or nahirapan ka talagang sagutin at i-analyze, skip that question, proceed to the next. Balikan mo na lang pagtapos mo na. Kasi may oras yan eh, so hindi pwedeng magtagal ka sa isang question, mauubusan ka, mas marami kang hindi masasagutan. Don't be anxious kung may naunang matapos magsagot ng exam. Ako nun, siguro pang Di pa ako nangangalahati may nagpasa na ng exam. Huwag kayong pa-intimidate sa ganun. At as long as iniintindi nyo bawat tanong at mahaba pa yung oras at tama yung sagot mo at sure ka dun sa mga isasagot mo, walang problema. Di mo kailangan makipaghabulan. Paunahan magsagot matapos magsagot. Set your own pace and stick to it. Keep breathing before and during the test. Ako bago ako mag-start, huminga ako ng sampung beses. Deep breathing, ganun and first tip na ka ganun. Nakakatulong sa akin yun para mawala yung kaba, para hindi ka ma-mental block, para maging maayos ang pag-isip mo. Effective po yun. Minsan, at some point, makararamdaman mo yung kaba eh, bigla ang kakabahin. So, hinga ka lang, hinga, to relax yourself, and then continue answering. Or kung may time na yung concentration mo nawawala, deep breathe lang. Effective yun. Don't listen to negative words or behavior. Isang sample is yung pagkumpara nyo, yung mga sagot nyo habang nag-exam kayo. Huwag na huwag nyo gagawin. Kapag nagsagot na kayo, huwag nyo nang tanongin yung mga kasama nyo kung anong sagot mo sa ganito, anong sagot mo dun sa ganito. Huwag na, tataas lang yung anxiety nyo. Once matapos ka dun sa test, huwag nyo nang pag-usapan. Nonsense rin eh, kasi nasagot mo na, hindi mo na mapapreta yung sagot. Ang mangyayari lang, magiging kabado ka. Eh, mali mo, maka-affect pa yun sa mga susunod na exams na sasagutan mo. What are some pamahiin na ginawa namin noong board exam? Magsuot daw ng pula na panty at bra. Ginawa ko yun. Magsuot ng pulang panty at bra para makapasa ng board exam. Kasi, pula means lucky daw. And then, bago ka lumabas ng exam room, sisipain mo yung upuan mo. And then, pag lalabas ka, never look back. Tredetso yung labas at unahin mo yung right foot daw. Ginali ko rin yung lapis ko noon after 2 days ng exam. Yun lang naman. Siguro naging effective din. Pero wala namang masama kung maniniwala. Diba? Try mo na lang para hindi ka ganun ma-stress. Isipin mo na darating naman talaga yung board exam. Mangyayari at mangyayari yun. Huwag mo nang isipin na ano. Handa ba ako? Siyempre pinagandaan mo yan. First year pa lang. Kaya nga, nag-review ka pa. Para mas maging handa ka pa. Okay, good luck sa lahat ng mga magtitek ng nursing licensure exam. Makukuha nyo rin yung RN sa dulo ng pangalan nyo. Tiwala lang. Sipag at tsaga. By the way, may isasama akong website sa description ng video na to. Doon sa website, nursing games siya. Maraming topics from basic nursing hanggang complicated topics. At gusto ko kasi yung paulit-ulit. Parang kanta na lang siya na pag ulit-ulit mo mababasan, naretay na sa utak mo. Diba? Ibis na maglaro ka online, laruin mo na lang yung mga nursing games. Matututo ka pa. Okay? Check nyo na lang. Shout out po kay Matt Lelis, Arjel Ipanto, at kay Hiro. Magingat po kayo lagi. I hope makatulong sa inyo itong video na to. If you have any suggestions, please comment down yung mga suggestions nyo at yung mga gusto nyo pang makita sa mga vlogs ko. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed in my YouTube channel, please subscribe. Please like, share this video and click the notification bell para updated ka sa mga susunod ko pang vlogs. Feed your brains with glucose and good thoughts. Gusto ko, healthy ka. This is beauty!